What is up, everybody? Welcome to The Horror Fiend. I'm Jeff. Hi, I'm Rachel. <laughs> <laughs> and joining us today with another awesome interview and one that we are all excited about, if you couldn't tell by Rachel's expression over there and me being happy right here, we have <laughs> the lovely and completely talented and awesome Melanie Kinnaman from Friday the 13th. Not just any Friday the 13th, okay? She is from one of my favorite Friday the 13th. I don't care if I get hit, heat for it either, but she's from <laughs> A New Beginning, okay? She's from the Roy Friday the 13th. <laughs> so, Melanie, welcome to the show. Thank you so much. Thanks for having me. And yes, I am in the the Roy Friday the 13th. It, in my opinion, it is one of the best because, and me and Rachel were actually talking about it earlier, like, the kills in that movie, like those are like Jason level kills. And you like, you Absolutely. think it's Jason. It's, yeah, I'd have to agree. It's like truly for me, those scenes remind me of so much of the nostalgic grindhouse, like true 80s kills. Like, oh, I got goosebumps just thinking about it. <laughs> well, no, I, I still think Jason was in it because from my character's point of view, it was Jason. That yeah, was Jason. You know, exactly. The film, so. So for me, it was always Jason in my mind. Right, that's that's the best way to do it, too. Um, I mean, and technically, he is in the film, like, depending on how oh, you look yes. at it, Jason is yeah. in the film. Um, so let's start. Let's jump into the meat and potatoes and everything. The first thing I want to ask you, I'm going to start this off with. Um, so how did you get the role of Pam? Like, can you ex like give us the walkthrough, how the process you went through it, getting into such an iconic franchise and being one of the few survivor girls that like actually survived that franchise and go through so how did you get through that well it was an audition like any audition you just go in I mean there were some days as an actress I would go in five auditions a day so this was just another day another audition and I didn't know about Friday the 13th franchise I had never seen a Friday wow. the 13th ever so oh. I went in I read like you normally do and they brought me right back, and it was the uh, producer, uh, Frank Mancuso Jr., it was Danny Steinman, and a few other executives. So I, I read some of the script, because what you don't know is there's a lot more in the script for Pam that actually- Really? Makes, yeah. There's actually a, a whole character developed of this girl, and she never really quite makes it to the screen. So I had to make her at least come oh, alive because we made room for the kills. Yeah, yeah, you that know, makes a lot of sense. Yeah. A lot of, of, of character. So anyway, mm -hmm. I, I, I read the script, the lines they gave me, and then they stopped me and they said, we'd like you to do an improv uh, oh. that you're being murdered. Oh my gosh. And you're sitting there at this long banquette I can't I, even imagine. There's about <laughs> eight, eight men sitting there. And so I took a moment. I think I remember leaving the room and then walking in and going into this scene of being murdered. When I finished, I know I ended up on the floor and I looked up when it was over and I looked at the people sitting at the table and their jaws were wide open and I said, well, I guess the, to myself, I said, well, I guess this worked because I knew what I was trying to portray. You just never know if it's going to be felt. Absolutely. Absolutely. They, they felt it in the room and I finished and they, they were just kind of stunned and they said, okay. So I stood up, we talked a little bit more and uh, <clears throat> excuse me, I left. And I think I heard in a few hours, which is the quickest you ever hear. Absolutely. It usually takes you know, days, sometimes weeks before weeks. you even get a call back. I've had, yes, weeks for callbacks. There have been jobs. I had 15 callbacks. Yeah. It would be a month. Yeah, this was, I heard in a few hours. So that's, that's amazing. amazing. And they did tell me that it was a Friday the 13th, but that meant nothing to me. Yeah, I mean, of I course. Had heard of them, but I'd never seen them. So the following day, when we signed contracts and confirmed everything, I said, I think I really need to see part four. <laughs> <laughs> that's a good that's so a good idea in. yeah so i went to see part four uh which was i thought great for a horror film you know like i said i'm a novice to horror film so i thought it was well done and i knew what was coming up i think but i was wrong because it was different from part four was there anything different um in the script originally that got changed or edited out in the final like production that, like I said, there was a lot of information about who I was, how who Pam mm -hmm. was. 
Um, I think they cut out, they did cut out dialogue. I think they might have cut out a few kills that were too X rated. Mm -hmm. Oh, wow. But for the most part, I think what you see is what you get. There were a few things towards the end and the reveal that had been changed. Yeah. Yeah. Did you have creative freedom over, um, like, was there any improv, like, in the scene, like, towards the end, like, when there was a lot of fighting and such? Did you have a lot of create? was it, was it choreographed, or did you have, like, kind of a sense of, you know yeah. what I mean? Like well, The deal with that is it is all choreographed because you're dealing with rain machines. Yeah. You're dealing with a long sequence of running. You mm -hmm. have to run and hit a certain spot along the way. And you did it in the rain well, when it's wet. Way. And I saw you literally fall on the ground and I was like, oh my gosh, I can't imagine. And that fall <laughs> was also choreographed. Wow. So they nice. told me you need to fall. That looks so real. I was like, I hope she didn't hurt herself, like it's actually you falling you like need that. To fall at this, Absolutely. where the X is, this is your spot, you have to fall. However you do it, we don't care. You just need to do it right there. So yeah. I had to, in my Phenomenal. mind. Phenomenal. Yeah, in my mind. And again, it was all muddy because they had those damn rain machines going. Absolutely. I was like, dude, they're just Potential. getting. Oh I even said, can you turn these down? Because this is like the worst <laughs> I've been in. It was freezing rain. Anyway, I, so when I come out of the barn, I'm running from the barn. I have to time as the camera is following me, yeah, oh, I'm going to hit that spot. Absolutely. And, you know, I didn't know if I was going to get hurt or not. And it wasn't one take. I think I fell maybe six, seven times. Oh, my gosh. And covered in mud. I can't covered even imagine. Mud, like, as mud. an act, like, I'm an actress yeah. myself. So, like, when I watched this, like, when I watched the film, I was like, <laughs> I can't even imagine how, like, incredibly tedious that had to have been. And it looked so real. And That's I was just amazed. Yeah. Every part of it was choreographed or at least blocked out. You had slight leeway. Yeah. I uh, had no leeway in the scene where uh, grandpa comes through the- mm -hmm. The window. Oh my gosh. There's no room for error there. And they needed yeah. to put it on one take because they couldn't redo the glass. So, and they did it a long, sh a long stream of consciousness yeah. from the shot was seamless. In other words, I come in from the door. Absolutely. From outside, I come in. All of that is shot with no edit, no stopping. So wow. I, I had to continue walking and hit that spot before he came through the window. That's wow. Yeah. That's amazing. Most I can't of the film was like that. Most of the film was really precisely because of the effects. You know, yeah. because of so was it a little nerve wracking at times? Yeah. And then you kind of got into it um because you knew you had to yeah absolutely. and you were so determined to hit it because you didn't want to go through it five times oh yeah absolutely so i got better as it as time went on the chainsaw scene was a little bit more difficult that was all blocked oh up. my gosh yes that was rehearsed with a stunt coordinator so yeah that's so cool that's awesome um you mentioned like how there was a lot more dialogue etc for the character pam um that's something that I'm, I'm hoping will get released because I know not long ago they did like that whole box set for Friday the 13th. And I know a lot of them have like bonus features and everything else. I'm not sure if that's on there, but if it's not like they strongly need to release that just because like Pam is a survivor girl, you know, and she's one of the only few in the whole franchise that survives like. Exactly. Yeah. You definitely deserve more dialogue and anything else because you did a great job as the character. Like I appreciate absolutely. it. I don't think I don't think they even have any of that film of that. They just cut it before. Oh we man. Yeah, they cut That's it. That's unfortunate. Yeah, we're not doing this scene because we need to make room for such and such kill. Yeah. And I, I don't want, you know, what am I gonna say? <laughs> no. uh, speak I have the role. Tell me. <laughs> Speaking of kills, um, in the movie, I'm I'm sure you've watched it, you know, since it's been out and everything else. Um what would what would you say is your favorite scene and then what would you say is your favorite kill god i don't know if i have a favorite kill because they all just creep me out i'm, I'm not a horror fan it happens so fast too it's yeah. like one after the other i have to say the clever some of them were too gory for me but they were great um but i have to say the most clever to me was the 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 flare in the mouth oh yep Oh, yes, absolutely. I wasn't there from 
I wasn't there for any of the kills now that I think of it. I wasn't there for any of them. So to see them and how it was done, I knew how they did it, but how it was done on film really looks, believe, I mean, it was good, great, great. So the flare was a <laughs> pretty good one. It was, a, it was, it had flair to it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's, a, that's, was, the, that's the lame dad joke that I always use with that because that is, that, that is probably my favorite kill. Honestly, it's the flare yeah. scene. I love that one. And then I love the one where um, he wraps, I, I don't think it's a belt. I think it's like a strap that he uses yes. around the tree. Oh, yeah. Uh, oh, the yeah, that's, really twisting. yeah. Like, Dixon, that's a good one too. Like that is a very like, jason kill because like you have to have an unnatural amount of strength yeah. to be able to pull that off and yeah. so like to this day every time i watch that it's like that is just mind-blowing how well that how it came off and just like i was like oh man like and just thinking like, just a normal human you know after Absolutely. watching the movie and knowing that it was just that paramedic just um that was insane like that was such i just awesome really scene. i just really wanted the grandpa to survive I, know. I really wanted grandpa to survive. I was so distraught. Uh, I was like, man, man, why are you going to kill grandpa? I'm just glad Reggie survived. I oh my about, gosh. I know. I was just him. about to say that. <laughs> yeah. How old was he? Um, he was, the, like no, how old was, was, was Oh my gosh. Yeah. And he <sighs> and I are close friends. So I see him now that he's, I don't know if I can say how old he is. I think he's 50. <laughs> no, so. I, that's that's so cool that he was an actual teenager like you know in like while the film was with teenagers <laughs> right. I was the only so that's so fun yeah. that's great and i was just about to say it's those goddamn enchiladas but, uh... <laughs> <laughs> that was iconic i think that yeah. is my favorite kill scene of like one of my all-time favorite Friday the 13th kill scenes. Well, it's like, singing? who, like, how unfortunate do you have to be in life to die? In the bathroom. In a outhouse. Outhouse. Oh, my gosh. I was outhouse. like, that is unfortunate. But they're singing, you know, <laughs> the great song he made Absolutely. up. And, and the girlfriend, the beautiful girl is singing. Oh, she's show. so beautiful. Yeah. Oh, my yeah. gosh. I couldn't get over it. I, I know that's on that. Ooh, baby. Ooh, baby. Did he? Yeah. That's he awesome. On the spot and she picked it up and she kept doing it. And it, it was just. That's, I love, I love little things like that. Yeah, like I that's what there. makes, that's what I love. I mean, it, it happens in a lot of genres, but with horror, I think it's really funny because you have to have some comedic relief, yeah. um, but you that. can he always tell when it's genuine like that. And I thought it was really cool. Yeah, Miguel is pretty, is really great and he's funny. So that yeah. was a great improv that he did on the spot. Yeah. That's cool. I made a comment uh, in my notes that young Tommy in the nightmare in the beginning when he's wearing the yellow rain jacket reminds me of Georgie from It. <laughs> That's great. I, I I wrote that. I was like, I have to, I have to mention that because when I was rewatching the film a couple of weeks ago, I I uh, couldn't really remember what had happened at the beginning. So when I saw the young Tommy in the dream wearing the raincoat, I was like, this is odd. Is are we? Uh, am I watching the right movie? That's funny, I never thought of that. I That's thought it was cool. really because it's in the rain and mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But yeah. It was a good opening, I think. I loved oh, it yeah. a lot. I loved how. He, like in the beginning and the end had the same type of really? like dream sequence because mm -hmm. even when Tommy does wake up again and then he has the knife and the mask you're like oh my gosh is he the new Jason but yeah. you never really know because it ends he was supposed to be so yeah yeah, yeah that's that what like, oh, that's what I was hearing was that that ending it was supposed to be him and like everybody yeah. was wondering like oh man did he kill Pam like what was exactly. going on with that whole thing and, well, what um, do you think? What like what got, is your take on, on the ending? On, we got signed on to do part six, John and I. Yeah. So when I got part five, it was a two picture contract. That oh. as I was supposed to do five and six. Uh -huh. So that where six was going to start, where five ended. Um, and about a month before we were supposed to start, I got a phone call from my agent saying they heard from Paramount and that John Shepard's decided not to do part six. Oh, and I couldn't believe it because I was ready to go. 
and, yeah. and they already paid me. So exactly. Yeah. So he decided not to do part six. He didn't want to do horror anymore. And someone pick they, it up. And they said <laughs> that, that ruins the whole idea because we can't bring in another Tommy. Yeah. You can't do part six without him. You can't have Pam without. So we exactly both, we were both done. Uh, done and they had to come up with a whole new concept for part six and they decided to go back to the old thing of having Jason. i was i was curious as to why six was completely different but because, that makes sense because john shepherd didn't want to do it oh man yeah, i would love to sense. see where your character it would have been very interesting it would have been great for me but there's a one positive in that i never die that's true. Yes, that's that is so true. Things. I need to think only about that. One. Oh my gosh. I am the only one that is a forever survivor in the history of the franchise. Oh my exactly. God, I want that on a yeah. shirt. I want that on a shirt so I can wear that. I can wear it. <laughs> I mean, had I come back, we don't know. Yeah. So speaking oh, so of cool. that, so I want to roll with that real quick since you just mentioned that. Did you have any sort of a script? Can you like give us any information of how maybe it could have went since obviously well I, all i knew no there wasn't a script given to me i we were wow. to shoot three months from the day that we stopped a month oh, wow. in of my waiting and thinking oh great i'm going to work in two months a month in they called and said it's a no-go because john won't do it so i never got to see a script but i was told that it was going to pick up where we left off that final scene with john behind me and he was going to be the new jason I don't know if I would have died, most likely, my guess is, but I, I, I'll never know. See, that's interesting, too, because even though John didn't return, like, with part six, that was the end of the Tommy Everything. Jarvis trilogy. Like, they yes. still brought Tommy Jarvis back, just a new actor. So yeah. I wonder why they didn't just go ahead and bring you back with it and just keep with it. I mean, yeah, John might not have returned, but there's no reason why you couldn't have returned no, and still yeah, exactly. done it with Logic, new... and That was our argument, and that was my agent's argument, but it's paramount. And yeah. they said they decided um, that they weren't going to do them anymore. Now, correct me, because you probably know the history more. Wasn't uh, part six new line or a different? It wasn't Paramount. I don't think so. Let me double check. I think um, was it Universal? I think I was the last Paramount girl. <laughs> I was the last pi Paramount final girl, which I love. Yeah. So I believe that Paramount had stopped the whole thing. When John wasn't going to do it, they decided to, they said that part five was the end for them. So they I said, believe a new studio picked up six and did six and they wanted nothing to do with the Paramount stuff. In other words, part five. They, they kind of wanted a do over, I guess. They would have never brought me in. They have a whole new girl, a whole new Tommy. They shouldn't have used the Tommy name, in my opinion. Yeah, like I agree with and that. And that's, I think that's what made me confused. Like, because um, I started watching these movies when I was a kid. And then as I got older, I would follow every time you know, the new ones. And, but I, that always confused me how there was a part, you know, the part four and then the part five. Yeah. And then it was just completely different. So I was like, did I miss a movie? It's like Star Wars. <laughs> like what's happening right now? <laughs> but that makes sense. But that's so unfortunate. Yes, it was unfortunate. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I agree. And like, it's weird because like it shows that it was distributed by Paramount. So it yeah, it was distributed by Paramount. So no, they, they definitely should have, if they were going to bring back Tommy Jarvis, they should have brought you back with it. I think that would have made the most sense. And we're chances make a are, petition right now. Right. And chances are, and like the more I think about it, like in the history of slasher movies, there's not many that have gone like two movies onward being the survivor. You know what I mean? And yeah. so like, yeah. like in, in the, in the first movie, the girl that survives that one dies in part two at the beginning of part two. Mm -hmm. And so if you would have come back, I I'm willing to bet safe money on this, that you would wound up surviving that one as well. Cause you already knew Tommy. So I yeah. bet they would have went along. Oh, that that's line cool. Yeah. That be would to, be really cool. To yeah. be able to fight him like the end of the Yang and, you could have been, and like you technically are, like right now, you're in one of those rare situations where you are one of the only women in horror movies, or men for that matter, too, that's an actual survivor and like didn't die. And if you would have been in like another one, that would have been phenomenal. Which is like in, in um, Nightmare on Elm Street, Lisa Wilcox is in two and she survived both. Wow. And that, that would be like one of those rare, really rare, because there's only like two 
maybe three in the history yeah, of horror that has survived. Absolutely. It would have been like, great. It would have been great on so many levels, but it didn't happen. Such is show business. You, you know, what's great though right now is the fact that like there's so many different fan films coming out, like that whole 13 fanboy and everything mm-hmm. else. So somebody could easily, if they're watching this, pick this freaking idea up. Someone like, do it pick right it now. Up, pick it up. Get this woman in the movie as Pam again. And oh, let her please, whoop, let her whoop Jason Tommy Jarvis ass. <laughs> <laughs> like it needs to happen. We need to see, and like even if it's like a forty year later, thirty year later type deal, that would still be awesome. Like obviously that, would, that works. It would tie and, up so many loose ends, and I think it would make other people like us go, "Yes, finally we get some answers." You know, mm-hmm. like oh, that would be so cool. Yeah. So my next question for you, and again, I'm going to keep rolling with this. If the opportunity ever presented itself again for you to play the role of Pam, would you take that opportunity? Yes, I would love to. Yes. But it would depend. It would depend on the quality of the project. You know, absolutely. I don't want to do just anything. It's, you know, I do turn down a bunch of stuff. Completely (laughs) understandable. Did you hear about that, the 13 fanboy? I guess That's, I heard about it because I'm friends with most of the people involved in it. So, yeah. uh, yes, Did I they, hope it does. Were you it reached out for it or anything? It. Sorry? Was were, I, you, were you reached out on it or anything? No. Are you going to be in it? No, 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 no. no. I'm going to have this to have okay. talk to Somewhat, sure. We need to start a tweet thread right now. Like, <laughs> let's get this going. Like, this is a shame. This is a but damn I, shame. I hope they do really well with it. I think they are. And I, I love all the people associated with it. That's awesome. Some are my friends, so I wish them well with it. But no, 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 I wasn't approached. But that's okay because I'm doing other stuff. So I just yeah, you were you were mentioning to me earlier this week that you're actually you know filming. So I was like, okay, you know. Oh, Uh, really? What can you can you tell us? um, It's it's, what I love about it is it's a 1970s style horror film. Oh hell yeah! A lot of yes. Oh my gosh! Yeah, yeah. So that's I, exciting. I get to, well, I can't tell you the end, but I, I get to be um, a heroine in that. So I get to. That's going to be great. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I'm, I'm already that. invested. I love the 70s <laughs> style uh, horror. Me I too. Love the 70s films. I think the films were all great in the 70s. So definitely. Um, is there any possible, um, I know you probably can't share a whole lot of the specifics, but is there a projected release date for this just so we can keep eyes out? Yeah, late 2022. So probably a year. Awesome. Not bad. bad. Uh, It's still in production a little bit. I I think I'm done. I have one pickup scene and the rest I'm done, but they still have more to do. And then people take their time editing and COVID has slowed, slowed everything down. Yeah. Oh my gosh, I understand. Situation on the sets here and the protocol has slowed a lot of stuff down. So I believe a I uh, a lot of productions sat back and weren't able to proceed because of the COVID situation in Los Angeles. Yeah. It's and, much better now and things are rolling, but I'm telling you, I was signed to do some things last year in March and they still haven't happened. Now they're going to Wow. Yeah. 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 And that's when it all kicked off too. So that's understandable. Um, uh, Are you able to share the name of the movie? Just so like when it does come out, I want to be able to like share it. I want to be able to tell people to check it out. As soon as I'm allowed to, I will contact you because I have your info. I will also, I will also post it. So. Yeah. I will I will share it. I will um, I I'll talk it. about it on here everything because that's great. I will, we it's love the horror film. community. It's an independent yes. film, but it's not it's not a fan film. It's a a, a film company. It's a yeah. Is it no, in a isn't it like an is it an original work? Yes. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah. So it's good. And it's it's a lot of young people who were not alive in the 70s, <laughs> but they love horror and they did their research and they're great, great director, great writer. So that's, that's awesome. awesome. And that's, that's what I like seeing is cause like, that's, it's the younger generation that's going to keep pushing horror forward, yeah. you know, the and slashes and everything else. That's what's going to keep it going. So I love, I always love seeing like independent companies coming out and, you know, kicking ass. Cause like no offense to big time companies right yeah. now, but a lot of the independent scene is a hell of a lot better. Oh, absolutely. They're doing much more interesting stuff. 
-hmm. And I have to say um, also, you don't have to be in a big, uh, big uh, studio. I have to say Netflix, Amazon Prime have done so many great things. For oh, definitely. Absolutely. This has opened up so many things and tried things that certainly major studios wouldn't try. Oh, absolutely. Well, yeah. They wouldn't, wouldn't try. Least... Yeah. They've given a, ch a chances to a lot of people. And I think a lot of great work has come out because of it. Absolutely. Because like, you know, mm -hmm. I, I partake in the indie film community. Mm -hmm. And one of my favorite things that, you know, I've noticed is that they're pushing the boundaries, not so much with um, filmmaking, but even when it when it comes to like ethnicities and body types mm -hmm. and all those things like yeah. the indie film is kind of pressuring these big major studios to go, hey, you can still make a really good horror film without all of the unnecessary stereotype, like, right. you know, the stereotypes. Yeah. No, so I I've noticed that with like Netflix and Amazon Prime, like watching the new like new ones that are coming out, I've I've noticed a huge difference and even shift. HBO, even HBO Max. There's yeah, absolutely. And so I'm hoping like now we'll get more original content instead of remakes. I Not that I don't you know mind remakes, but I do I love do. a really good original work, which yeah. you're going to be a part of. So I'm really excited for that. So I'm really excited for that. But I think that's all I have. So. Okay. So my next question for you, we're going to wrap it up because I know you're very busy. So I want to get just a couple more out um, to all your fans. If you could say something to all of them right now, if you could leave them with like some sort of inspiration, what would you like to say to your fans? And like, what kind of inspiration would you like to give all of them who will be watching this now or at some point down the road? Well, first, I'd like to thank them for, for their interest in, in my career, in my life, or whatever I've done. They've been supportive all these years and for still loving Friday the 13th Part 5. It's, a, it's, it's, very, um, it, it's very heartening to have somebody, a character that you did all those years ago, still be liked and it's been an inspiration to some people. I get a lot of letters telling me what it's done. What I've learned in my life, and it's followed me from when I was very young, is that don't let anyone tell you you can't do something. You keep trying. You do what you, what you feel you want to do. If you fail once, you get up and you do it again. I mean, many people have said this. What has worked for me is to not stop. Look at me. I'm still, come on, I'm still doing it. Uh, most of most people say, I can't believe you're still in the business because I have friends that started out with me in New York in the 70s and they're done. They just don't, you know. Um, <laughs> you have to have a perseverance. Absolutely. You have to have a belief in yourself. It's a very simple thing to say, but it's hard to have. You have a belief in yourself and no matter what anyone says, you know you can do it. And if something stops you, you try another way to do it. And you just keep plugging along till you get it done. Whatever makes you happy, do. And don't let anybody tell you you can't do it. Oh, I love that so much. The That's so inspirational. Is, is belief in yourself and never give up. I'm telling you, look at me. I never gave up. Yes. Queen. <laughs> People say, oh, forget it. I never gave up. And if I have nothing else to say, it's that. Oh, my gosh. That is amazing. I, can't. I have goosebumps. <laughs> yeah. So do I. That's amazing because, like, that's what people need to realize, especially now, like now more than ever during these times. Yes. Um, like, I, I personally. So much, negativity, so much negativity. People are jealous. They don't because they can't do it. They don't want to see you do it. You got to push everything away from you. Got to push that all out and just exactly. listen to yourself and do it. Exactly. Um, like I, I tell people, even though COVID has been absolutely insane and devastating for everybody, it's also the reason why this channel is up right now. And like, yeah. so I'm thankful for it. I really am. Like, I'm not thankful for COVID, but I'm thankful for the <laughs> fact that, you yeah, know, we can still we can still come together in the horror community and still be able to lean on one another and right. cherish the the nostalgia of our childhoods and be able to, you know. Just have you, a good time. What you did, both of you, is you made an opportunity. You saw an opportunity in a bad thing like COVID, 
and you kick the door open and you did something with it. You know? Exactly. You got and it, the door open. That's, that's it. All we, that's all we have to and do. that's what you did. You came up with something you wanted to do that you were driven to do in a bad situation with a pandemic and you did it. You both did it. Uh, thank you for that. Honestly, that's, that's awesome. And I am thankful. I really am like this. This has been awesome. Just getting the chance to speak oh. with people like this you. This is with like a you. dream it's come just, true. Yeah, it's phenomenal. <laughs> and like, this is, I'm just some punk kid from California. And like, this has always been like what I wanted to do, you know, like the universal monsters got me into this. And just ever since then, you know, the slasher franchise, horror movies, just everything. It's just, mm -hmm. it's been my love, like, and being able to do this, being able to speak with you and everybody else that I've had the honor and privilege of speaking with. It's been just, it's been a dream come true, literally. And Absolutely. the words that you said, you that's made it exactly happen. the truth. Exactly. You made it happen. As an aspiring actress myself, like, I just, uh, like, hearing you say that, like, you never gave up and that, you know, because it's such a tough world out there. Yes. Like, it gives me so much hope that the sky, the sky's the limit. There's no ceiling. Yeah, that's true. Do you know? And that's really. Since, since I was a little girl, the thing that got me through every single day, because my childhood wasn't that great, like a lot of people didn't have. Um. I would get up every single morning and be excited and say, it's a whole new day. Anything can happen. And even if that day was crappy, I did it every single day. I don't know what it was in me and I still do it. It's something that got me through my whole life. You have to wake up every day and find something. Absolutely. That, that charges you and says, hey, anything can happen. And you know, that's the truth. Anything can happen. I love it. Right, no, no I, I, I'm proof of that. Anything can happen. Absolutely. Because I should be gone. <laughs> no way. That is the last really, thing. You are immortal. Be. You yeah, are that immortal. That is the last thing. <laughs> <laughs> but um, we have one last question okay. to ask yes. you, and I am going to let Rachel take it over. It is what we do on every video. So you are one of our victims as well. I am sorry. Okay. <laughs> we would like to know what your favorite scary movie is. Oh, that's easy. Exorcist. Oh, yep. I was in, I was in a movie with Eileen and oh. she is fantastic. Yes. And the oh. exorcist to this day, still, I know what's coming, still scares me. I oh, think yeah. it's oh my brilliant. gosh. That is like the best suspense. answer. I like suspense much more than. Absolutely. That is the most perfect movie. I it agree. really is. We have been getting that answer a lot and have I you? Under, like, you can't. You can't go wrong with it. Like The Exorcist is one of those movies that it just Timeless. I can't I can't find uh -huh. anything wrong with it. You know? Nothing. And I, no, I typically like not at all. Hell. It's like I don't. It's gonna be really rare for a movie to even I wouldn't say compare, but like that. What is gonna which movie in the future to come is going to be the next Exorcist? Is that even perfection. possible? It was perfection. Exactly. <sighs> I agree. Great answer. Absolutely love it. I'm <laughs> sure everybody that's going to be watching this is going to love it as well. Um, with that said, again, Melanie, I wanted to say thank you from the bottom of my heart for agreeing to be on the horror yeah. feed. It, it, it means a lot me. to us. Thank you. Absolutely. Oh, we should stay in touch so I know what's going on with both of your careers. Yes, oh, I would love to. Please. Oh my gosh. And we got to get a petition going for you to be in the new Friday the 13th film. We got to do it. I agree with that. And also, right speaking along that, once that new movie that you're in is out, I would like yeah. very much to get you back on okay, the horror theme so we could talk about it. Okay. Yeah. That would be great. That I'd would be, be so great. much fun. Yeah. Awesome. Well, there you have it, folks. I hope you enjoyed this interview. We, we've we been having fun doing these. Apparently, you guys are liking them, so it makes us happy. Um, <laughs> for the horror theme, I am Jeff. I'm Rachel. That was Melanie. Bye. You guys, bye. Thank you.